Well guys, what I want to spend the next few minutes doing is just having a quick look at the kidney. We should know the parts of it and what they do, but we need to make sure we can relate it back to homeostasis, to its actual job of maintaining water balance. Here is a badly drawn nephron. We should start off with what's going on. At the top here, we've got ultrafiltration. We'll look at that soon. Over here, we've got reabsorption of some of the filtrate. In the last video, we looked at all of it, but with a little bit more detail, we need to know that glucose is moved actively. Water is passive. Salts are mainly active. Except for chlorine ions. I guess if you're moving the positive ions actively, the negative ions can easily follow. As we move down here, we should know there's an overall net movement of water out, which is osmosis. On this side, there's a net movement of salts out. And that's a combination of active and of passive movement. And right at the end, we have the homeostatic function where ADH, antidiuretic hormone, modifies the permeability, words too long, of the collecting duct. Now this area is the only area where we get homeostasis occurring. The rest of it is just standard all the time. Things to remember that the kidney is getting more and more salty as we come down this way. More salty, which allows water dif to diffuse out better here, which allows the salts to diffuse out more and more as we move back away from the center of the kidney. And the other thing we should remember is that the two sides of the loop of Henle, the descending going down and ascending going up, are opposites in terms of permeability. This is probably obvious, but it's worth stating that the downside, the descending limb, only is permeable to water. Upside, only permeable to salts. The other stuff cannot move through it. So now that's the basic functioning of our nephron. But we need to relate this whole system to homeostasis. And if you remember the diagrams we've used before for homeostatic regulation, we've got three parts. The first part is the sensor. Now, I guess we need to go back a step. Homeostatic control of what? The kidney is about the water balance, the water potential of your blood. So something here is gonna sense the water potential in your blood. It's gonna send a messenger, or more than one messenger, to the area, the effector, that will actually make a change. Now, what part of your body senses your water balance in the blood? That would be your hypothalamus. Seems to detect a lot. Lumus. And if you have too much water, it decreases the amount of ADH. If there's not enough water, it increases the amount of ADH, antidiuretic hormone. And the effector, these act on the collecting duct at the end of the nephron. The collecting duct, yes, in the kidney. So if you've got too much water, less ADH, your collecting duct becomes more waterproof means the water goes straight through to your bladder. On the other hand, if you don't have enough water, message gets sent, which is less ADH. It makes 
you're collecting dark, the more permeable to water, so more can be reabsorbed back into your body. And something else at a higher level you're supposed to know is that there is a second hormone called aldosterone. Try that again, aldosterone. That also increases sodium reabsorption. It's complex, you don't need to know how it works, you just need to know that it is there and does work. We can probably summarise everything that happens in the kidney as there are four steps, there are four processes. The first process, active reabsorption, mainly active. Active reabsorption. The second process is water diffusion. Third process, salt diffusion, but and some active transport. And the fourth process, the only homeostatic process, is the homeostatic control of water reabsorption, which occurs in the collecting duct. This is in yellow because it's the only time it's homeostatic. The water coming out of here just happens. Salts moving out of here just happen. Independent of how wet your body is, how much water you have in your blood. This is the bit that changes to maintain homeostasis. So there are four key steps which add up to the four processes occurring in the nephron.